According to Reuters, New Zealand Defence Minister Judith Collins said on Monday she expects to receive a review into the country's defence capabilities in June, the latest step in the modernization of the country's military. New Zealand's military is struggling with aging equipment and personnel shortages, with three of the country's nine Navy ships idle due to of staff shortages. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks fell, adding to last week's rout, as investors assessed the latest pledge by policymakers to stabilize the slumping market. The Hang Seng China Enterprises Index fell as much as 1.5% before pairing some of its loss. The CSI 300 index also slipped following its worst week since 2022. Both indexes have trailed most major equity benchmarks around the world this year. According to Bloomberg, Energy security is set to dominate a gathering of international executives and government officials in India this week, as the world's third largest oil importer juggles the impact of Red Sea tensions, tighter sanctions against Russia and a looming general election. The event, which starts Tuesday, is an opportunity to showcase Prime Minister Narendra Modi's progress on renewable electricity and, for a domestic audience, to highlight existing efforts to keep power prices under control. But it will also be a chance to further other ambitions, in particular resolving hurdles in trade with Russia that have contributed to a drop in flows of discounted oil. According to Reuters, U.S. activist fund Elliott Management has called on Japan's biggest property group Mitsui Fudasan to launch a 1 trillion yen buyback, the Financial Times reported on Monday. Elliott's demands include the company sell down its $3.6 billion stake in Oriental Land, which runs Tokyo Disneyland, the report said citing people close to the fund and Mitsui Fudasan. According to Reuters, the 2024 Grammy Awards may be a launching pad for the Best New Artist winner, Victoria Monet, who took home the title at Sunday's 66th ceremony. Known for a combination of RB and pop music, Monet was nominated in seven Grammy categories this year, including Record of the Year for her single, On My Mama. According to Reuters, Kobold Medals, a California-based metals exploration company backed by billionaires Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, said it may consider partnerships as it plans to fast-track development of a new copper mine in Zambia that could cost about $2 billion. The Silicon Valley startup, which uses artificial intelligence to search for copper, cobalt, nickel and lithium could also consider listing its shares publicly in the next three to four years, Josh Goldman, its co-founder and president, told Reuters. According to Bloomberg, Hurricane force winds whipped the seas off California, while heavy rains raised flood risks from San Francisco to San Diego, as another powerful Pacific storm arrived on the state's doorstep. Governor Gavin Newsom on Sunday declared a state of emergency in eight counties as rain and heavy winds battered much of the state. According to Bloomberg, oil rose, following its biggest weekly drop since October after Iran-backed Houthis promised to retaliate against U.S. and U.K.-led airstrikes. Brent crude climbed to near $78 a barrel after declining by 7.4% last week, with U.S. counterpart West Texas Intermediate under $73. U.S. forces launched attacks against the Houthis in Yemen over the weekend after earlier hitting Iranian forces and militias in Syria and Iraq. According to Bloomberg, Treasuries extended Friday's sell-off after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said policymakers will likely wait beyond March before cutting interest rates. Chinese small-cap shares slid as market jitters persisted despite signs of official support. U.S. 10-year yields climbed four basis points in Asia after jumping 14 basis points Friday following stronger-than-expected payroll data. The danger of moving too soon is that the job's not quite done. Powell said in an interview on CBS's 60 Minutes that was screened Sunday in the U.S. According to Bloomberg, Turkish monthly inflation in January probably jumped the most since the summer, an acceleration that could test the new central bank chief's resolve after his predecessor announced the end of a tightening cycle. On the back of a sharp increase in the minimum wage and government tax adjustments, Data due Monday will probably show price gains in January from a month earlier quickened to 6.5% after five consecutive monthly declines, according to the median forecast in a Bloomberg poll of economists. According to Bloomberg, as hedge funds rake in record profits in one of the riskiest corners of the debt market, the products behind those returns are now drawing in more mainstream investors. 
Catastrophe bonds, which last year formed the basis for the best performing hedge fund strategy, have been delivering gains that trounce those of other high risk fixed income products. In 2023, the securities soared 20%, compared with 13% for high yield U.S. corporate bonds. U.S. Treasuries rose roughly 4%. According to Bloomberg, Indonesia's economy expanded at a modest pace in the fourth quarter as the slump in exports persisted while any gains from election-related spending was seen as limited. Gross domestic product rose 5.04% in the October to December period from a year ago, according to the statistics agency on Monday. That compares with the 5% median estimate in a Bloomberg survey and against the 4.94% reported for the third quarter. According to Bloomberg, even as Auzora Bank Limited shares cratered last week, demand for its stock surged among a segment of small retail investors. The buyers, who used Japan's tax-free accounts called NISA, might not have been aware that the bank had predicted a loss and cancelled its dividend, according to Hideyuki Suzuki, a general manager at SBI Securities Co. According to Reuters, China's securities regulator said on Monday it will closely monitor and take forceful measures to prevent risks from pledged shares as the stock market plunged to five-year lows. The slump has led to many big shareholders of listed companies who borrowed against their stocks facing margin calls. According to Reuters, for Australia, China has become the golden goose that's always about to stop laying. For more than three decades now, Barely a year has passed where a China crisis was not just around the corner, certain to shut down the rivers of gold flowing into Australia's trade coffers. According to Bloomberg, El Salvador's Nayib Bukele expects to have ridden a wave of voter support for his anti-crime policies to a second term in Sunday's election, even as rights groups criticize mass arrests and abuses of civil liberties that have occurred on his watch. Bukele claimed victory two hours after voting ended saying exit polls showed him winning more than 85% of the vote for president, and 58 out of 60 seats in Congress. The country's electoral authority has yet to publish results. According to Reuters, Samsung Electronics chairman J.Y. Lee was found not guilty by a sole court on Monday in a case related to irregularities in a 2015 merger of Samsung affiliates that prosecutors said was designed to cement his control of the tech group. Prosecutors had asked for a five-year jail term last November. Lee denied wrongdoing, arguing that he and other executives acted on the belief the merger would benefit shareholders. According to Reuters, Cano Health filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware late on Sunday and said it entered into a restructuring support agreement to reduce debt and solicit potential offers, including the sale of the firm. The primary care provider said it has received a commitment for $150 million in new debtor in possession financing from some of its existing lenders, which is expected to provide sufficient liquidity to support its ongoing operations. According to Reuters, Nasdaq listed technology company Yandex NV on Monday said it had agreed a 475 billion ruble cash and shares deal to sell its Russian assets to a consortium of Russian investors, including a fund ultimately owned by oil major Lukoil. Often referred to as Russia's Google, tech firm Yandex developed leading online services, including search, advertising and ride-hailing, and was one of the few Russian companies with the potential to become a global business until Moscow invaded Ukraine in February 2022. According to Bloomberg, Samsung Electronics Co. Executive Chairman J.Y. Lee scored an important victory Monday after a sole court acquitted him of stock manipulation charges, finally removing the threat of jail time that dogged the billionaire for more than a decade. A sole central district court judge delivered the verdict after about an hour's recitation of the ruling, which focused on whether evidence pointed to Lee manipulating a deal years ago to gain more influence within Samsung. His acquittal lifts a weight off the world's largest maker of memory chips and displays, which is struggling with a global downturn and a stiff challenge from Apple Inc. in smartphones and SK Hynix Inc. in the nascent field of AI. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields rose on Monday, tracking U.S. Treasury yields that jumped after the monthly jobs report blew expectations for the U.S. Federal Reserve's imminent interest rate cuts. The 10-year JGB yield jumped 6.5 basis points to 0.720%, its biggest daily move since January 24, and was last seen at 0.715%. 
According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average rose on Monday, buoyed by a weaker yen and gains on Wall Street at the end of last week. The Nikkei added 0.54% to finish the day at 36,354.16, with 167 of its 225 components rising, while 56 declined and two were flat. According to Bloomberg, Thousands of sheep and cattle stuck on a ship off the coast of Western Australia remain in limbo a month after they initially went to sea, as another livestock carrier departed the country with even more animals. A request by the exporter to send the animals on the Bahija back overseas is being assessed as a matter of priority, Adam Fennessy, Secretary for Australia's Agriculture Department, said in a statement on Sunday. There are no significant health or welfare concerns with the livestock on the ship, he added. According to Bloomberg, China will come up with an action plan to attract foreign investment, an economic official said Monday, without offering any details about when it would be released or what it would contain. Beijing will promote the introduction of an action plan to attract foreign investment, according to Meng Wei, Director General of the National Development and Reform Commission's legal department. The government will continue to cut the negative list which restricts the sectors foreign firms can invest in and scrap curbs for overseas investment in the manufacturing sector she said during a press conference in the national capital. According to Reuters, the three founding shareholders of Software One said on Monday they plan to replace the board of the Swiss IT service provider following a failed bid last year to delist the company with a sale to U.S. investor Bain Capital. Daniel von Stocker, Rene Gilly and B. Curdy Holding, said in a statement they want to vote President Adam Warby and most other members off the board and have called for an extraordinary general meeting to elect a new board with no delay. According to Reuters, Asian shares eased on Monday and the dollar was firm after a robust U.S. jobs report dashed expectations of a near-term interest rate cut from the Federal Reserve, while stocks in China were volatile as investor sentiment remained shaky. Oil prices surged following fresh strikes on Iran-aligned factions in Iraq, Syria and Yemen by the United States, with rising tension in the Middle East keeping risk appetite in check. According to Bloomberg, CVC Capital Partners is exploring a sale of South Korean hotel and travel booking app Good Choice Company, according to people familiar with the matter. The private equity firm is working with a financial advisor and a potential sale process could kick off later this year, the people said, asking not to be identified discussing confidential information. The asset could be valued at $1 billion to $1.5 billion in a transaction, the people said. According to Reuters, Pepsi India bottler Varun Beverages reported a nearly 77% surge in its quarterly profit on Monday, as it saw double-digit volume growth across domestic and international markets even as higher costs of essentials weighed on consumers. Consolidated net profit rose to 1.32 billion rupees for the fourth quarter ended December 31, compared with 747.5 million rupees in the year-ago period. According to Bloomberg, Britain's labour market is tighter than thought according to official data that showed unemployment dropping to 3.9% in the three months through November. The new reading from the Office for National Statistics, adjusted for new population estimates, compares with an earlier estimate of 4.2% compiled for the same period with experimental data. It will feed into the Bank of England's calculation about when wage and price pressures might have subsided enough to allow it to cut interest rates. According to Bloomberg, Turkish monthly inflation in January jumped the most since August, an upswing that could test the central bank's resolve to quell inflation quickly after ending its tightening cycle last month. Policymakers called an end to their tightening cycle last month but Hafize Gay Erkin's surprise removal from the top job has left the path forward uncertain. Fatih Karahan, a deputy governor chosen to replace her, said on Sunday that the central bank would be ready to act if the inflation outlook deteriorates. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. vowed more strikes against Iran's forces and its proxies in the Middle East after three straight days of punishing attacks, even as Washington insisted it won't be pulled into a prolonged regional conflict. We will respond forcefully, and we will respond in a sustained way, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said on CBS. Even so, he said, President Joe Biden doesn't see U.S. actions in the last three days as some open-ended military campaign. According to Bloomberg, 
Paytm's stock fell for a third straight day as India's central bank considers scrapping the license of Paytm Payments Bank Limited, adding to the mounting troubles at the once celebrated fintech startup. India's central bank is weighing the removal of the permit after finding several lapses at Paytm Payments Bank including multiple transactions beyond regulatory limits, raising money laundering concerns, Bloomberg News reported last week. The regulator has already ordered the bank to halt much of its business, potentially affecting the broader digital payments pioneer's prospects. According to Bloomberg, UBS Group AG's hotly anticipated three-year growth plan will take the spotlight this week, when it reports alongside French peers Société Générale SA and Crédit Agricole SA. The Swiss bank is expected to map out in more detail the course it intends to take after integrating Credit Suisse. While investors are counting on profitability improving, UBS's ability to retain top talent will be key, even more so as central banks pivot toward interest rate cuts and rising impairments threaten earnings power across the sector, analysts say. According to Reuters, French technology company Autos on Monday said it was in talks with its banks about refinancing its debt, and that conditions for its initially planned rights issue were no longer valid due to changes in market environment. The standby underwriting commitment by BNP Paribas and JP Morgan for the 720 million euro rights issue was also no longer in effect, it added. According to Reuters, Britain's unemployment rate was much lower late last year than previously thought, the Office for National Statistics said on Monday, citing re-weighted survey results that might add to the Bank of England's caution about cutting interest rates quickly. The new data showed an unemployment rate of 3.9% in the three months to November compared with 4.2% provided by the ONS last month on a temporary, experimental basis. According to Bloomberg, Iran evaded sanctions and was able to covertly move money around the world using accounts at two of the UK's biggest banks, Lloyd's Banking Group PLC and Santander UK PLC, the Financial Times reported. The banks provided accounts to front companies secretly owned by a sanctioned Iranian petrochemicals company. The newspaper reported on Sunday, citing documents it viewed. The sanctions evasion plan was backed by Iran's intelligence services, the report said. According to Reuters, Taiwan's Foxconn, the world's largest contract electronics maker and Apple's biggest iPhone assembler, on Monday reiterated that it expected an on-year drop in first-quarter revenue coming off a high base. The first quarter is traditionally quieter than the previous one, the season when Taiwan's tech companies race to supply smartphones, tablets and other electronics to major vendors such as Apple for Western markets year-end holiday period. According to Reuters, for a second-day running state-backed buying likely scraped Chinese stocks from multi-year lows. Investors doubt the support will last and warn it leaves markets unbalanced and unstable. Formed in response to a market crash in 2015. The so-called national team of Chinese state-backed investors poured $17 billion into index tracking funds last month and were piling in on Friday and Monday as markets fell, analysts say. According to Reuters, Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, Japan's largest lender by assets, on Monday reported third-quarter net profit that tripled from the same period a year prior when earnings were pulled down by an asset sale. MUFG posted profit of 370.64 billion yen for October to December, against 112.08 billion yen a year earlier, showed Reuters calculations based on nine-month cumulative figures disclosed in a stock exchange filing. According to Reuters, Eurozone yields rose and money markets trimmed bets on future rate cuts on Monday after U.S. data and remarks by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell strengthened expectations that central banks will not need to ease policy quickly. Investors sold off sovereign bonds on both sides of the Atlantic on Friday following data showing an unexpected surge in U.S. job growth, prompting a rapid reassessment of how many rate cuts major central banks might deliver in 2024. According to Reuters, Global hedge funds were poised to profit from the plunge that occurred in U.S. regional banking stocks last week, according to a J.P. Morgan Prime brokerage note to clients on Saturday that cited data as of January 31. U.S. regional bank stocks tumbled about 8% on January 31 after New York Community Bancorp reported a surprise earnings miss that saw its stock dive over 40%, signaling broader turmoil in the sector. According to Reuters, 
Soaring appetite for Huawei's artificial intelligence chips coupled with manufacturing constraints has forced the Chinese tech giant to prioritize AI and slow production for its premium Mate 60 phones, people familiar with the matter said. Huawei uses one facility producing both its Ascend AI chips and the Kirin chips that power its rival to Apple's iPhone, three people said, two of whom said output has been hamstrung by a low yield rate, a proxy for production quality. According to Reuters, shares in French carmaker Renault rose more than 4% on Monday, with traders citing media speculation over a potential combination with rival Stellantis. Citing unnamed financial sources, Italian daily Il Messaggero reported on Sunday that France is considering a merger between the two to strengthen its grip on the sector and counter Chinese and German competition. According to Reuters, Shares in Santander and Lloyds fell after the Financial Times reported that Iran used accounts from two of the UK's biggest banks to covertly move money around the world as part of a vast sanctions evasion scheme backed by Tehran's intelligence services. According to documents seen by the Financial Times, Lloyds and Santander UK provided accounts to British front companies secretly owned by a sanctioned Iranian petrochemicals company based in London. According to Reuters, the eurozone economy showed tentative signs of recovery at the start of the year, according to a survey which showed rising inflationary pressures, bolstering the European Central Bank's case for keeping interest rates at record highs. HCOB's composite PMI for the bloc, compiled by SP Global and seen as a good guide of overall economic health, rose to 47.9 in January from December's 47.6, matching a preliminary estimate. According to Yahoo Finance, Stocks are back near record highs with the SP500 finishing Friday at 4,959, its highest close ever. All three major indexes logged gains for the week, surviving a tumultuous week of trading. Stocks initially slid following lackluster tech results from Microsoft and Alphabet, and sold off further on Wednesday when Fed Chair Jerome Powell said an interest rate cut in March is not the base case. According to Bloomberg, Yandex NV reached an agreement to sell its Russian business, including the nation's most popular search engine, to a group led by management in a deal valued at about $5.2 billion. The investors will get stakes in Yandex International PJSC, which was registered in Russia's Kaliningrad Special Economic Zone late last year. The total value of the deal will be 475 billion rubles, subject to adjustments and payable in a combination of cash and Class A shares of the parent company according to a statement from Yandex on Monday. According to Bloomberg, Senegal's eurobonds fell sharply after President Macky Sall postponed this month's presidential elections and Islamakers gathered to consider extending his mandate until a successor takes power. Police reinforced security in the capital on Monday, a day after clashes with opposition supporters on the streets of Dakar that led to the arrest of officials including former Prime Minister Aminata Touré and Anta Babakar Ngom one of the candidates in the election. The African Union and the Economic Community of West African States called for talks to resolve the crisis. According to Reuters, the Kremlin said on Monday it welcomes a $5.2 billion deal separating the Russian assets of technology company Yandex into a Russian-owned entity. The Kremlin has been engaged in negotiations with Yandex for around 18 months to try and spin off its Russian businesses from Yandex NV, its Dutch parent company. According to Reuters, investor morale in the eurozone improved for the fourth consecutive month in February to its highest level since April, but economic weakness in Germany means it is too early to give the all clear, a survey showed on Monday. Centix's index for the eurozone rose to minus 12.9 points in February from minus 15.8 in January, above a reading of minus 15.0 estimated in a Reuters poll of analysts. According to Reuters, British services businesses started 2024 on a robust footing, with a solid inflow of new orders and the fastest hiring in six months, as the prospect of lower interest rates made customers more willing to spend, a survey showed on Monday. The SP Global Services PMI for Britain rose to 54.3 in January from 53.4 in December, its highest reading since May 2023 and stronger than an initial estimate of 53.8. According to Bloomberg, Boeing Company found more mistakes with holes drilled in the fuselage of its 737 MAX jet, 
a setback that could further slow deliveries on a critical program already restricted by regulators over quality lapses. The latest manufacturing slip originated with a supplier and will require rework on about 50 undelivered 737 jets to repair the faulty rivet holes, Boeing commercial chief Stan Deal said in a note to staff. While he didn't identify the contractor, a spokesman for fuselage supplier Spirit Aerosystems Holdings Inc. said said it's aware of the issue and will conduct repairs. According to Bloomberg, investors who bought into Turkey's transformation story are unusually optimistic after the shock departure of central bank governor Hafize Gay Erkin, expecting her successor to intensify an orthodox push in the nearly $1 trillion emerging market. In the past, Surprise late-night changes at Turkey's central bank have fueled periods of financial stress. This time appears different, investors said, thanks largely to the new governor's credentials, including work as an economist at the New York Federal Reserve, his reputation since he joined the revamped Monetary Policy Committee last year, and the blessing of market-friendly finance minister Mehmet Simsek. According to Reuters, Britain sold its one millionth battery electric vehicle in January despite a drop in private buyer demand, an industry body said Monday, calling on the government to provide relief to buyers in next month's budget. Overall new car sales in January rose 8.2% to 147,876 units, the best since 2020, buoyed by strong demand in the fleet market, the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders said. According to Reuters, Animal and early-stage human trial data for Amgen's experimental obesity drug published in a medical journal showed that it promoted significant weight loss with an acceptable safety profile, the company said on Monday. The dataset published in Nature Metabolism details outcomes and adverse events for the 49 patients in the Phase 1 trial of the drug, Meridebert cafraglitide. Trial participants received different doses of the drug ranging from 21 mg to 840 mg. Patients in the study were obese, but did not have other underlying health conditions such as diabetes. According to Reuters, European shares paired earlier gains to be nearly flat on Monday as upbeat corporate reports were outweighed by broader subdued sentiment as investors reassessed their interest rate cut expectations. According to Reuters, the global economy is on course to hold up better this year than expected only a few months ago as an improved outlook in the United States offsets eurozone weakness, the OECD said on Monday. World economic growth is expected to ease from 3.1% in 2023 to 2.9% this year, better than the 2.7% expected in November in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's last outlook. According to Bloomberg, Cobalt Metals, a Bill Gates-backed mining startup that uses AI to explore for materials key to the green energy transition, said it's discovered a huge copper deposit in Zambia. Mingomba is shaping up to be extraordinary, according to Cobold president Josh Goldman. He compares its potential to that of the Kakula mine, developed by Ivanhoe Mines Limited and China's Zijin Mining Group company just across the border in Democratic Republic of Congo. That mine produced almost 400,000 tons of copper last year. According to Reuters, the Kremlin on Monday warned the West that any attempt to use frozen Russian assets as collateral to raise funds for Ukraine would be illegal and lead to years of litigation because Moscow would challenge any such action. The Financial Times reported on Saturday that the G7 had drawn up plans to use frozen Russian assets as collateral for debt sold to help Ukraine. Bloomberg also reported on the plan. According to Bloomberg, the world's major central banks mustn't drop their guard in the fight against inflation as it's too soon to say if sharp interest rate increases have contained underlying price pressures, the OECD said. Global economic growth is proving more resilient and inflation in the US and Europe is easing faster than the organization expected in its November outlook. But it warned that factors helping that process, including improvements in supply chains and commodity costs, are dissipating or even reversing. According to Reuters, Stellantis chairman John Elkan said on Monday the automaker had no MA plans in response to press speculation about a possible French-led merger with rival Renault. There are no plans being studied regarding mergers of Stellantis with other manufacturers, Elkan said in a statement, adding the group was focused on the execution of its long-term business plan. According to Bloomberg, 
China's smallest stocks are flashing a warning about the potential downside for the world's second largest equity market if Beijing fails to follow through on a highly anticipated rescue campaign. While the country's large cap CSI 300 index eked out a 0.7% gain on Monday after a renewed pledge from regulators to support the market, a gauge of small cap shares sank more than 6% to the lowest level since 2018. That took the CSI 1000 index's losses to 27% this year after the measure underperformed larger peers by the most in more than nine years in January. According to Bloomberg, Arduna Group Limited plans to launch a $2 billion bond sale as soon as Monday, in a key win for banks over private credit firms that had offered a record-breaking $5 billion loan to the UK insurer. A group of Wall Street lenders led by Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs Group Inc. is expected to manage the bond offering, which could include a mix of secured and unsecured bonds denominated in US dollars and euros, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Private credit firms will still provide a loan of around $3 billion, said the people, asking not to be identified discussing confidential information. According to Bloomberg, U.S. bonds fell after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell pushed back again the prospect of an interest rate cut in March, further dashing hopes of a speedy pivot toward easier monetary policy. Short-dated treasuries, which move in tandem with the outlook for rates, led losses, with two-year yields rising as much as 10 basis points to a one-month high of 4.46%. The chance of a quarter-point cut in March fell to almost 10% after Powell said in an interview with CBS's 60 Minutes aired Sunday that Americans may have to wait beyond the Fed's next meeting to cut interest rates. According to Reuters, a $5.2 billion cash and share deal to sell the key Russian assets of technology group Yandex, often labeled as Russia's Google, to a consortium of Russian investors was announced on Monday after months of negotiations. Here's why the deal is significant. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures dipped on Monday, pressured by rising Treasury yields, as investors turned cautious on the timing of interest rate cuts while awaiting more quarterly reports from corporate America. In a gloomy start to the week, two-year Treasury yields jumped to a one-month high at 4.4% after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said in an interview aired on Sunday that he wanted to wait to be a little more confident that inflation was sustainably falling before moving interest rates lower. According to Reuters, sovereign debt sales from developing nations scaled an all-time record for January at $47 billion led by major and less risky emerging markets but a lack of investor flows into dedicated funds could curtail a nascent recovery for riskier issuers. The start of the year, generally a busy time for debt sales of all sorts, has seen Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Hungary, Romania and a raft of others deliver some big-ticket bond issuance. According to Reuters, Meta's oversight board has found a Facebook video wrongfully suggesting that U.S. President Joe Biden is a pedophile does not violate the company's current rules while deeming those rules incoherent and too narrowly focused on eye-generated content. The board, which is funded by Meta but run independently, took on the Biden video case in October in response to a user complaint about an altered seven-second video of the president posted on Meta's flagship social network. According to Reuters, Canada's plan to cut the maximum lending rate for regulated institutions could give illicit financiers an opportunity to step in and serve distressed customers, leading to a rise in criminal activity, a study released on Monday showed. Finance Minister Christia Freeland in the 2023 federal budget laid out plans to amend the criminal code to cap the top annual consumer lending rate for all regulated financial institutions at 35% from 47% to combat predatory lending practices. According to Reuters, a draft U.S. bill that has triggered a sell-off in shares of China's biotech firm Wuxi Aptech could deal a major blow not just to the firm but could also impact many labs and Western drugmakers that rely on it for research and manufacturing, public data showed. A congressional committee focused on China introduced a bill late last month that would restrict federally funded medical providers from allowing China's BGI group, Wuxi Aptech and other biotech firms from getting genetic information about Americans. According to Reuters, more than 600,000 homes and businesses were still without power in California early on Monday, according to data from PowerOutage.us, after an atmospheric river storm pounded the state with heavy rainfall and hurricane-force winds.
The storm is the second Pineapple Express weather system, or atmospheric river storm, to hit the state in the past week and arrived just as Los Angeles welcomed celebrities for the music industry's Grammy Awards. According to Reuters, National Grid's Grain LNG on Monday announced a long-term terminal use agreement with Venture Global enabling the UK-based regasification and sale of LNG from all of Venture Global's LNG terminals in Louisiana. In its first investment in LNG infrastructure outside the United States, Venture Global would have access to 3 million metric tons per annum of LNG storage and regasification capacity at Britain's Isle of Grain LNG receiving terminal for 16 years beginning in 2029. According to Yahoo Finance, when Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell shut down investor hopes for a March interest rate cut on Wednesday, he also made an observation about the economy that many Wall Street stock bulls have been saying for months. We feel like inflation is coming down, Powell said. Growth has been strong. The labor market is strong. According to Reuters, the European Commission on Monday said it would have intervened if the Dutch government had denied slots at Schiphol Airport to new entrants such as U.S. carrier JetBlue but was now satisfied that passengers would not be deprived of choice. The Commission said new entrants on transatlantic routes such as Amsterdam-New York were needed to offset the distorting effects on competition by airlines that combine their routes in joint ventures. According to Reuters, the pound fell to its lowest since mid-December on Monday after a very strong U.S. jobs report and comments from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell combined to boost the dollar. Sterling fell to $1.2581, its lowest since December 17, and last traded 0.32% lower at $1.2593. According to Reuters, Novo Holdings, the holding company of Novo Nordisk, will buy contract drugmaker Catalant in an all-cash transaction worth $11.5 billion in equity value to expand its capacity for popular weight loss drug Wegovy, the company said on Monday. Under the deal, Novo Holdings will buy all outstanding shares of Catalant for $63.50 per share in cash, a premium of 16.5% to Catalant's last trading price. According to Reuters, Metagenomy Technologies, a genetic medicines company backed by Bayer Healthcare and Moderna, said on Monday it was targeting a valuation of up to $638 million for its initial public offering in New York. The company is looking to sell 6.25 million shares priced between $15 and $17 each. At the top end of the proposed range, the IPO would fetch $106.25 million for the Emeryville, California-based startup. According to Reuters, Lowe's Corp. on Monday reported a near 26% jump in fourth-quarter profit, as higher premiums in a market rally at the end of last year helped the insurer earn more on its investments. U.S. government bonds rallied at the end of last year on expectations that the Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates in 2024 as inflation cools and the economy slows. According to Reuters, Mac lipstick maker Estee Lauder slashed its annual profit forecast on Monday and announced a restructuring program aimed at cutting about 3% to 5% of its workforce to rein in costs. Shares of the New York-based company were up 6% in pre-market trade. According to Reuters, Brazilian fashion companies Arezzo and Grupo Soma said on Monday they had agreed a merger to form an entity with revenues of 12 billion reais to be 54% controlled by Arezzo. The companies, which will bring together more than 2,000 company-owned and franchised stores and 34 brands, will later choose the name of the new company, which will have Grupo Soma's shareholders owning the remaining 46%. According to Yahoo Finance, McDonald's fans are still showing up for their Big Macs, but just not as much as Wall Street thought. The company, which reported its Q4 results on February 5, posted global same-store sales growth of 3.4%, lower than the expected 4.79% jump. Its U.S. sales growth clocked in at 4.3%, under the 4.45% increase Wall Street anticipated. According to Reuters, McDonald's reported its first quarterly sales miss in nearly four years on Monday, squeezed by weak sales growth in its business division that includes the Middle East, China and India. However, the company's overall net profit rose 7% in the fourth quarter thanks to higher menu pricing and a let-up in raw material costs. According to Bloomberg, Estee Lauder Cuz. 
soared after saying it's cutting as many as 3,000 positions as part of a restructuring plan to put one of the world's largest beauty companies back on track. The owner of the Ordinary and Clinique brands has a global staff of around 62,000 and said Monday that it's eliminating 3% to 5% of those jobs. According to Reuters, Brazil recorded a 18% decline in foreign direct investment in 2023, despite efforts by President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva's government to position the country as a strong candidate for attracting green investment flows. According to Reuters, U.S. asset manager Vanguard has cut Indian ride-hailing company Ola Cab's valuation by 30% to under $2 billion in at least its third straight markdown, a regulatory filing showed, as the startup is locked in a battle for market share with Uber. Vanguard now values Ani Technologies, Ola Cab's parent company, at about $1.88 billion, according to a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, which did not mention a reason for the valuation cut. It last valued the company at about $2.65 billion in August 2023. According to Reuters, Chinese workers packed into trains on Monday, heading home for the Lunar New Year holidays with worries about their jobs and a stuttering economy overshadowing the build-up to the long-awaited family reunions. People are expected to make a record 9 billion journeys before and after the Feb 10-17 break, usually a time for celebration and relaxation. According to Reuters, Chile began an official two-day mourning period on Monday for the 112 so far killed in the South American country's deadliest wildfires in recent history, while authorities continue to battle blazes fanned by high temperatures and strong winds. Fires that broke out in central Chile late last week gathered momentum throughout the weekend, ravaging the coastal cities of Vina del Mar and Valparaiso. Hundreds of people remain missing and some 14,000 homes have been damaged. According to Reuters, Britain's homebuilders are on investors' radars this week, with earnings that could give an indication of whether the drop in gilt yields late last year translated into enough of a fall in mortgage rates to grease the wheels of the economy. Fears that central banks around the world including the Bank of England will keep rates higher for longer, reinforced by last week's policy decisions and data, suggest this will be a bumpy road however. According to Reuters, Chinese brokerages, including state-owned Behemoth China International Capital Corp., have restricted the amount of cross-border swap transactions domestic investors can undertake, as authorities seek to defend the weak stock market, according to six sources familiar with the matter. Since Monday, domestic CICC clients cannot add new positions via total return swaps to make overseas investments, as the broker seeks to limit its derivatives book, said the sources. Three sources said at least three other major Chinese state brokerages have taken a similar approach. According to Reuters, Tyson Foods beat market expectations for first quarter revenue and profit on Monday, in first signs demand for its meat products is beginning to recover as inflation concerns ease. Customers had reined in spending on expensive meat products last year as inflation remained high, but grocery prices are starting to soften from their peak. According to Reuters, IDEXX Laboratories on Monday forecast annual revenue slightly ahead of Wall Street estimates after reporting better than expected quarterly sales, benefiting from higher demand for its companion animal health diagnostic services. IDEXX sees revenue for the full year to be between $3.93 billion and $4.04 billion, the midpoint of which is above analysts' estimates of $3.97 billion, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, a surge in demand for artificial intelligence and a steady rise in automotive chips will help propel a rebound in global chip sales this year, according to an industry group's annual sales data released on Monday. The Semiconductor Industry Association forecast a 13.1% jump in global chip sales to $595.3 billion, compared with a drop of about 8% in sales in 2023. According to Reuters, a resilient economy and a possibly higher neutral rate of interest means the U.S. Federal Reserve can take time, with less risk to an ongoing economic recovery, before deciding to reduce the benchmark interest rate, Minneapolis Federal Reserve President Neil Kashkari wrote in an essay published Monday. Inflation is making rapid progress towards the Fed's 2% target due to improvements in the supply of labor, goods and services, Kashkari said. While there may be some signs of economic weakness, he added, 
The overall story right now is one of continued growth and low unemployment, not of an economy stressed by the impact of a high Fed policy rate. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures slipped on Monday under pressure from rising Treasury yields as Fed Chair Jerome Powell pushed back firmly against market speculations of imminent rate cuts, while investors awaited more earnings from corporate America. In an interview aired on Sunday, Powell said more evidence was needed to show a sustainable downtrend in inflation to warrant lower interest rates as the economy's strength kept recession risks in check. According to Reuters, Cybersecurity startup Wiz has hired Dolly Rajik, former chief operating officer and president at Scalar, as the four-year-old startup seeks to keep growing at a fast clip and eyes an eventual public listing, the company told Reuters. Rajik, a seasoned sales executive, joined Wiz this week as its first-ever president and chief operating officer, after over four years at its larger security peer Scalar, which went public in 2018. According to Bloomberg, Harvard University named two top business executives to its governing board at a time of intense scrutiny and criticism of the institution from alumni, lawmakers and faculty. Kenneth Frazier, the former chief executive officer of Merck Company, and KKR Co. Co-CEO Joseph Bay, were elected Sunday by Harvard Corp. With the consent of the Board of Overseers, according to a statement from Alan M. Garber, the university's interim president. According to Reuters, a former lawyer at Clifford Chance has been cleared of insider dealing over allegations he used confidential information to buy shares in listed companies. Sahail Zina was standing trial alongside his brother Mohammed Zina, a former Goldman Sachs analyst, accused of using confidential information to make more than £140,000 from shares in six companies, including Arm Holdings and Punch Taverns. According to Reuters, British sailors Hannah Mills and Ben Ainsley on Monday named the squad who will attempt to win this year's inaugural Women's America's Cup and retain the youth version of the event. The selection of 12 sailors from more than 300 will see Mills back in a boat with Saskia Clark, the crew with whom the most successful Olympic female sailor won her first gold medal in the 470 dinghy class in Rio in 2016. According to Reuters, Johnson Johnson's experimental drug to treat two autoimmune disorders met the main goals in mid-stage and late-stage trials, the company said on Monday. The drug, nipocalumab, significantly reduced disease symptoms in a late-stage study with adult patients having myasthenia gravis, a chronic neuromuscular disorder that causes weakness in the voluntary muscles, JJ said. According to Reuters, Investors should be aggressive in buying U.S. banking stocks, as a recent upheaval in the industry has created attractive entry points, Citigroup analysts said on Monday, while upgrading their rating on Citizens Financial Group's stock. Commercial real estate-related concerns highlighted by New York Community Bancorp and Japan's Aozora Bank last week do not shake the brokerage's confidence in the broader group of banking stocks, it said. According to Bloomberg, Emerging market assets had an unsettled start to the week as Chinese stocks churned and investors readjusted bets on U.S. monetary easing. MSCI Inc.'s index for developing nation currencies fell 0.3 percent, with declines across Asia and EMEA, after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said the U.S. may have to wait beyond March for the central bank to cut interest rates. According to Bloomberg, Novo Nordisk A.S. agreed to buy three manufacturing plants for $11 billion to help it meet surging demand for obesity drug Wegovy and diabetes shot Ozempic. Novo is buying the fill finish sites from its main shareholder, Novo Holdings A.S., which on Monday agreed to buy the owner of the assets, Catalant Inc. in a deal with an enterprise value of $16.5 billion. According to Bloomberg, China is tightening trading restrictions on domestic institutional investors as well as some offshore units as authorities fight to stem a deepening stock route, according to people familiar with the matter. Officials this week imposed caps on some brokerages' cross-border total return swaps with clients, limiting a channel that can be used by China-based investors to short Hong Kong stocks, said the people, asking not to be identified discussing a private matter. At the same time, some Chinese brokers that use the channel to buy mainland shares for their offshore units were told not to reduce their positions, the people said. According to Reuters, 
Ratings agency Moody's warned on Monday that a lengthy delay to Senegal's election would challenge the country's planned fiscal consolidation by making it harder to implement policies, such as phasing out of energy subsidies by 2025. President Macky Sall announced on Saturday that the February 25th vote would be delayed to an unspecified date, the first ever such postponement in the country's history, due to a dispute over the candidate list and alleged corruption within the constitutional body that handled the list. According to Reuters, Anglo-American is in the early stages of exploring for copper and cobalt in Zambia's northwestern province, its chief executive officer Duncan Wanblad said on Monday. Zambia's mining sector appears to be on track for renewed activity, and that is good for Zambia and African mining, Wanblad told delegates at the African Mining Indaba in Cape Town. According to Reuters, Canada's Brookfield Asset Management said on Monday it had raised $10 billion in the first closing of its second Brookfield Global Transition Fund that focuses on investments in the global transition to a net-zero economy. With rising CO2 emissions and warming temperatures, economies across the globe has increased their efforts to transition to a net-zero economy, which has boosted appeal of such investment funds. According to Reuters, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Saudi Arabia on Monday, his first stop in a wider tour of the Middle East as Washington tries to advance negotiations on a normalization deal between the kingdom and Israel as well as make progress on talks for the governance of post-war Gaza. The top U.S. diplomat's fifth trip to the region since Hamas' deadly October 7 attack comes at a perilous moment and amid retaliatory U.S. strikes on Iran-backed militia across Syria. Iraq and Yemen in response to a drone strike last week in Jordan that killed three American troops and wounded dozens. According to Bloomberg, American shoppers won't be deterred by mounting credit card bills or the recent ripple of layoffs, according to the latest Bloomberg Markets Live Pulse survey. More than half of 463 respondents said spending will stay strong or get even stronger in 2024, with consumers set to keep shelling out for airline tickets, restaurant meals and concerts. The year's first jobs report, which showed hiring and wages on the rise, offered a boost to that view. According to Reuters, Singapore's mobile payment app firm Ubit said on Monday it had raised $25 million in a funding round amid expansion plans as it pushes to advance the adoption of cryptocurrencies as a means of payment. Investors in the Series A funding round included the investment arm of crypto firm Tether, Hong Kong-based venture capital firm CMCC Global's Titan Fund, technology investment firm 468 Capital and the co-founder of U.S. technology company Solana, Anatoly Yakovanko, Ubit said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, the Hollywood Hills and the Santa Monica Mountains face life-threatening landslides and flash flooding as an intense atmospheric river blankets Southern California. An extremely dangerous situation is unfolding in those areas, according to a National Weather Service post Monday on X. According to Reuters, NVIDIA's shares were set to scale a new peak on Monday after Goldman Sachs raised its price target for the high-flying chipmaker's stock in anticipation of a major boost to its earnings from the artificial intelligence boom. The stock rose 3.4% to $683.80 in pre-market trading and looked set to add about $55 billion to the company's market capitalization. It was valued at $1.63 trillion as of Friday's close. According to Reuters, Amazon.com has begun rolling out a new artificial intelligence assistant that is meant to address shoppers' product questions, but the feature raises as many questions as it answers. Rufus, as the software is known, will help users, according to Amazon, by guiding them to the toaster ovens or dinosaur toys that best fit their needs. Yet Amazon has a history of steering customers towards products that most benefit Amazon, either because they are more profitable or are backed by advertising dollars. According to Reuters, Israeli banks said on Monday they were heeding U.S. sanctions against four West Bank settlers accused of violence against Palestinians, despite calls by the finance minister and another far-right cabinet member not to comply. In a signal of Washington's growing displeasure with Israeli conduct in the occupied territory even as the Allies cooperate in the Gaza war, President Joe Biden issued an executive order on Thursday barring financial transactions by the four men. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's website said some doses of Eli Lilly's diabetes drug Monjaro are available only in limited quantities through early March 2024. 
The health regulator's website showed that higher doses of the injection were available in limited amounts, while lower doses of Monjaro were shown to be available. According to Reuters, Norway's Telenor said on Monday it had opened the world's southernmost mobile phone base station in Antarctica, bringing regular cell phone services to a corner of the frozen continent for the first time. The new 4G service covering the remote troll research station and its surroundings will boost security for scientists and staff and enable the use of Internet of Things devices that collect and upload real-time information, the group said. According to Reuters, Microsoft said on Monday it is teaming up with media platform Semaphore and other news organizations to help journalists work with generative AI in content production. Through these collaborations, Microsoft will help the organizations to identify and refine the procedures and policies to use artificial intelligence responsibly in news gathering and business practices, the tech giant said in a blog post. According to Reuters, Snap said on Monday it would cut around 528 employees, or 10% of its global workforce, joining other tech and media firms who recently announced job cuts. Shares of the company rose more than 2% in trading before the bell. According to Reuters, the prosecutor leading Sweden's probe into the Nord Stream gas pipeline blasts in the Baltic Sea in 2022 plans to announce a decision this week on whether to drop the case, press charges or request that someone is detained, his office said on Monday. The pipelines transporting Russian gas to Germany were ruptured by a series of explosions in Swedish and Danish economic zones. According to Reuters, Canadian service sector activity slowed for an eighth straight month in January as new business ebbed and cost pressures intensified, but the pace of decline eased from December, SP Global Canada Services PMI data showed on Monday. The headline business activity index rose to 45.8 in January from 44.6 in December. In November, the index posted a near three-and-a-half-year low of 44.5, while it has been below the 50 threshold that marks contraction in the sector since June. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields rose on Monday, with interest rate-sensitive two-year yields reaching four-week highs, after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell continued to push back against the prospect of near-term rate cuts. Powell said in an interview with 60 Minutes that the Fed can be prudent in deciding when to cut its benchmark interest rate, with a strong economy allowing central bankers time to build confidence that inflation will continue falling. According to Reuters, the Inter-American Development Bank will offload the risk on some loans to expand its lending capacity this year rather than issuing hybrid bonds, its head of asset liability management, Yasser Rezvi, said in an interview. In December, the AAA-rated IDB bought protection on the risk of losses on $300 million loans to Latin American and Caribbean nations from private insurers for the first time. According to Reuters, a massive Pineapple Express storm, the second in recent days, stalled over Southern California on Monday, drenching the Los Angeles area with torrential rain, bringing near-hurricane-force wind gusts and raising the threat of flash floods and landslides. Throughout California, some 40 million people were under flood, winter storm and high wind advisories on Monday morning, the National Weather Service said. A Pineapple Express weather system, named for its origin near Hawaii and also called an atmospheric river storm, is vast airborne current of dense moisture carried aloft from the Pacific and dumped on land as heavy precipitation. According to Reuters, days before Pakistan's February 8 election, a masked and headscarf-clad Komal Ashgar led a team of similarly dressed women through alleys in the eastern city of Lahore. Their mission? To knock on doors and distribute campaign pamphlets adorned with photos of jailed former Prime Minister, Imran Khan. According to Bloomberg, the investment unit of Deutsche Bank AG will have to divest more than 5% of holdings in some ESG funds in response to new European Union rules set to be implemented this year. The European Securities and Markets Authority will start enforcing new requirements in the coming months, targeting funds that reference ESG, sustainability, transition and impact in their names to ensure those terms really reflect what the portfolio holds. Though not yet finalized, the rules are already forcing asset managers to review portfolio holdings and make any necessary adjustments. According to Reuters, First National Bank of Pennsylvania was sued on Monday by the U.S. Department of Justice and the state of North Carolina, which accused it of lending discrimination known as redlining in the Charlotte and Winston-Salem, North Carolina markets. 
According to Reuters, the U.S. services sector growth picked up in January as new orders increased and employment rebounded, but suppliers appeared to fall behind, resulting in a measure of input prices rising to an 11-month high. The Institute for Supply Management said on Monday that its non-manufacturing PMI increased to 53.4 last month from 50.5 in December. A reading above 50 indicates growth in the services industry, which accounts for more than two-thirds of the economy. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast the index rising to 52.0. According to Reuters, Stellantis will slow down operations at its Mirafiori plant, in Turin, this month and next in response to weak market demand for its fully electric Fiat 500 small car and Maserati models, a spokesman for the automaker said on Monday. The stoppages will last until March 30th adding to a previously announced furlough period for about 2,250 workers at the plant from February 12 to March 3, the spokesman said. According to Reuters, strong sales growth will be the key to whether the Magnificent Seven group of U.S. tech and growth stocks can continue outperforming following their explosive gains in 2023, Goldman Sachs equity strategist said. The Magnificent Seven, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon.com, NVIDIA, Meta Platforms and Tesla, individually soared between around 50% and 240% in 2023, while collectively they accounted for over 60% of the SP500's total return last year. According to Reuters, China's securities regulator said on Monday that it would tighten scrutiny of margin financing, malicious short selling and seek to ward off risks involving pledged shares. The watchdog's vow to stabilize the market comes amid growing concerns that slumping share prices could trigger more selling in a vicious spiral. According to Yahoo Finance, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell is predicting that more small banks will likely close or merge due to commercial real estate weaknesses, but that the problem is ultimately manageable. The central bank official made this point during a 60 Minutes interview that aired Sunday night. It was Powell's first comments about the industry following a new bout of turmoil cascading through the stocks of many regional banks. According to Reuters, UBS expects the U.S. Federal Reserve to start cutting interest rates in May, after the central bank ruled out a rate cut in March and the latest U.S. data indicated resilience in the labor market. The Fed kept interest rates unchanged at its monetary policy decision on Wednesday and said rate cuts would come once it becomes more secure that inflation would continue to decline from a level it still characterizes as elevated. A strong labor market report on Friday only added to the uncertainty of early rate cuts. According to Reuters, the U.S. corporate bond market is set to break new issuance records as borrowers take advantage of lower financing costs than last year and investors emboldened by the prospect of an economic soft landing pile into the asset class. The Federal Reserve recently poured cold water on market expectations of imminent interest rate cuts, though its policymakers have projected that rates will fall this year as inflation continues to slow despite ongoing economic strength. According to Reuters, shares on Wall Street and in Europe fell on Monday and government bond yields surged off the back of geopolitical tensions, volatility in China and a scorching U.S. jobs report that dashed expectations of a near-term U.S. interest rate cut. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 1.07 percent to 38,239.86, the SP500 lost 0.73 percent to 4,922.23 and the Nasdaq Composite dropped 0.89 percent to 15,489.27 by 10.52 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. According to Reuters, the Federal Communications Commission on Thursday will stop accepting new enrollments for a government broadband internet subsidy program, used by nearly 23 million American households, which is set to run out of money in months. The enrollment freeze is necessary to slow the depletion of the remaining funding and reduce volatility in the program, FCC Chair Jessica Rosenworcel wrote Congress last week saying after that the commission will finalize the projected end date of the program absent new funding from lawmakers. According to Reuters, Air Products and Chemicals cut its forecast for financial year 2024 on Monday citing economic uncertainty in its biggest market Asia, particularly China, and a persistently low demand for helium in the electronics industry. According to Reuters, 
ExxonMobil has been ordered to explain to a federal judge by Monday why a lawsuit it filed against two shareholder activists should continue after the groups withdrew the climate resolution they had proposed for the energy giant's annual meeting. In the order issued on Friday, U.S. District Judge Mark Pittman told Exxon to file a status update, on or before, Monday as to what claims or issues remain before the court. According to Yahoo Finance, countries may be moving toward green energy, but big oil is hardly all in. On Friday, two impact-oriented funds dropped a climate proposal intended to go to an ExxonMobil shareholder vote after the Houston-based oil giant filed a lawsuit to remove the measure from its proxy ballot. According to Reuters, Bain Capital and Hellman Friedman have cooled in their pursuit of DocuSign Inc. over disagreements on how much they should pay to acquire the provider of online signature services, people familiar with the matter said on Monday. The private equity firms, which were competing to buy DocuSign, have not been able to agree a deal price with the company, which has a market value of $11 billion, after weeks of talks, the sources said. According to Reuters, Helicopters dumped tons of water on wildfires raging on across central Chile on Monday, as emergency crews told Reuters they were still finding bodies buried in the wreckage three days after the blazes took hold. The official death count from Chile's worst natural disaster in years stood at 112 as of Sunday night and was expected to climb as residents, firefighters and military raced to clear rubble. According to Reuters, more than a half million homes and businesses were without power in California on Monday after an atmospheric river storm pounded the state with heavy rainfall and hurricane force winds, according to Electric Utilities and Power Outage.us. The storm is the second so called Pineapple Express weather system, or atmospheric river storm, to hit the most populous U.S. state in the past week. Statewide, 516,000 electric customers were without power, according to data from Power Outage.us. According to Reuters, shares of Tesla fell nearly 6% on Monday after a report said German software firm SAP will no longer procure electric cars from the U.S. automaker, and Piper Sandler cut its stock price target on lower delivery expectations this year. Shares of the Elon Musk-led company fell 5.7% to $177.27 on Monday, hitting their lowest since May 2023. The stock has fallen 28% this year. According to Reuters, a U.S. federal judge on Monday set a September 9, 2024, date for the start of a jury trial in a lawsuit the U.S. Justice Department and a coalition of states filed last year against Google that accused the company of abusing its dominance of digital advertising technology. The lawsuit, filed in January 2023, accuses Google of monopolizing the market for digital advertising and undermining competition. The government has said Google should be forced to sell its ad manager suite. According to Reuters, Brazilian airline Azul said on Monday that it had launched a $148.7 million add-on to previously issued 2028 senior notes, which it will use to refinance debt. The bonds were initially issued in July for $800 million by a subsidiary of the carrier, Azul Secured Finance, with an 11.930% yield. According to Reuters, a new report has called for a radical global effort this year to help vulnerable countries fend off financial meltdown and climate change, including widespread debt relief and even a China-led version of the Brady Bond Plan. The report by the Boston University Global Development Policy Center warned that 62 developing economies, including most of Africa and Oceania, are already in a full-blown debt crisis or in immediate need of restructurings. According to Reuters, Britain's King Charles has been diagnosed with a form of cancer and will postpone public-facing duties, Buckingham Palace said in a statement on Monday. Charles, 75, had spent three nights in hospital last month after undergoing a corrective procedure for an enlarged prostate, when a separate issue of concern was noted. The palace said that tests had identified a form of cancer. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan has launched an investigation into the accounting practices at Archer Daniels Midland Company, according to people with direct knowledge of the matter. The probe is focused on the company's nutrition business, said the people, who asked not to be named discussing confidential information. According to Reuters, the U.S. Justice Department is probing accounting practices at Archer Daniels Midland Company, according to two people with direct knowledge of the matter ramping up pressure on the global commodities giant.
New York listed shares of ADM's stock dropped 24% on January 22 after the company disclosed the previous day that it had suspended its CFO amid an internal probe into accounting practices related to its nutrition division. The company's probe was prompted by a Securities and Exchange Commission inquiry, it said. According to Reuters, Yemen's Presidential Leadership Council issued a decision on Monday appointing its foreign minister Ahmed Awad bin Mubarak as the country's new prime minister. Outjing Prime Minister Mayan Abdul Malik Saeed will take on the role of an advisor to the chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council, the Office of Yemen's Cabinet later posted on X. According to Bloomberg, Canadian stocks are attractive, given the dividend growth that the benchmark SP-TSX Composite Index offers and the prospect of waning disinflationary pressure, says Bank of America Corpies Oh Sung Kwan. Own dividends, own inflation, own Canada, the strategist wrote in a Monday research note. 2024 could be a banner year for dividends as cash yields drop and a global recovery cycle lifts beaten down high dividend stocks. According to Reuters, Bank of England chief economist Hugh Pill said on Monday that the question now for most of the central bank's policymakers was when it would be appropriate to begin to cut interest rates, not if. Pill was among the six members of the bank's Monetary Policy Committee who voted last week to keep interest rates at 5.25 percent, while two officials voted for a hike and one voted for a cut. According to Bloomberg, World Bank President Ajay Banga said some of the development lenders' work is bogged down with too many requirements, which slows progress and impacts its effectiveness at a time when he's trying to raise capital and expand the bank's mandate. We are wasting time on this stuff. Banga said at an event Monday, referring to more than 1,100 rules that projects must clear to get funding from the bank's International Development Association, which offers grants and loans to the poorest nations. He said that's up from about 150 a couple of decades ago. According to Bloomberg, the tech industry has started 2024 with another wave of job cuts, paring back even further after widespread layoffs last year. So far, some 32,000 tech workers have lost their jobs in 2024 according to layoffs.fee, a startup that has been tracking job cuts in the industry since the pandemic. According to Reuters, the United States on Monday announced a new visa restriction policy for those it said were misusing commercial spyware. The policy announced by Secretary of State Antony Blinken will allow the State Department to impose visa restrictions for individuals believed to have been involved in the misuse of commercial spyware as well as for those who facilitate such actions and benefit from it. According to Yahoo Finance, Ford is on deck to report results for the fourth quarter in the full year after the bell on Tuesday, with its changing EV game plan in focus as the company shifts to hybrid production. The results come after GM reported strong results and profit guidance that indicated strength in the overall U.S. auto sector. For the quarter, Ford is expected to report top-line revenue of $40.35 billion as compiled by Bloomberg, a result that would be 3.5% lower than a year ago as the effects of the UAW strike lingered in early Q4. In terms of profitability, the consensus estimate is for Ford to report adjusted EPS of $0.13, cents, on adjusted EBIT of $988.2 million. According to Reuters, Argentina's President Javier Malay set off on an overseas tour on Monday that will see him visit Israel, locked in a conflict in Gaza, and then fly to Italy where he will meet the Pope, whom he once called the devil's representative on earth. The right-wing libertarian leader, an economist and former sharp-tongued pundit who took office in December, will also meet Italian conservative Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney, along with prominent business and religious leaders during his trip. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration on Monday said two U.S. airlines have inspected and returned to service nearly 94 percent of Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes following a mid-air emergency last month. The FAA lifted its grounding of MAX 9 airplanes on January 24 after it halted flights following the cabin panel blowout on an Alaska Airlines jet on January 5. The FAA said 78 of 79 United Airlines MAX 9 planes have been inspected and returned to service and 57 of 65 Alaska MAX 9 planes. According to Bloomberg, Illinois farmer Leon Adams Corn Planter sits at the center of a strategy by AGCO Corp. to expand in the world of agricultural machinery dominated by Deer Company. 
The Deere 1770 NT model was built in 2010 and painted in the company's iconic green and yellow, but the high-tech attachments that actually insert seeds into the ground, 24 rows at a time, are built by AGCO's Precision Planting brand. According to Reuters, Manchester United defender Lissandro Martinez will be sidelined for eight weeks with a knee injury sustained in Sunday's 3-0 home win over West Ham United, the club said on Monday. The Argentina international left the field in the 71st minute after suffering the problem when West Ham fullback Vladimir Safal fell on his knee after a challenge. According to Bloomberg, Bill Gross said he's betting that part of the interest rate curve will return to a more normal pattern, eliminating the inversion that's persisted even after the Federal Reserve stopped raising interest rates. Gross, the co-founder and former chief investment officer of Pacific Investment Management Company, said on social media X that he's buying September 2024 contracts tied to the secured overnight financing rate and selling the September 2025 one. According to Bloomberg, Bank of England chief economist Hugh Pill said interest rates could drop this year as a reward to the economy for bringing inflation down. Pill said borrowing costs are on track to fall so long as inflation declines as expected, and that the consumer prices index doesn't need to drop all the way to the 2% target before the cuts can begin. Monetary policy is now on a different path than we were over the course of last year, he said. According to Bloomberg, Tesla Inc.'s slide to the lowest level since May attracted a wave of bullish option buying not in the stock itself, but with an exchange-traded fund that offers more leverage. Investors flocked to a call option in Direxion Daily TSLA Bull 1.5x Shares ETF, an exchange-traded fund that seeks to replicate 150% of Tesla's performance, buying contracts that would benefit from a roughly 45% rally in the automaker by January 2025. According to Bloomberg, WeWork Inc.'s restructuring efforts appear to be stalled and the company may not have enough money to pay rent, lawyers for landlords and creditors said in bankruptcy court Monday. The company has failed to update its business plan, left details out of a key reorganization proposal and is either unwilling, or unable, to pay the rent on at least some of the office space WeWork uses to make money, creditor lawyers told the judge overseeing WeWork's Chapter 11 bankruptcy. According to Reuters, U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg on Monday said human drivers must pay attention at all times after videos emerged of people driving Teslas while wearing what appeared to be Apple's recently released Vision Pro headset. Buttigieg responded on X to a video that had more than 24 million views of a Tesla driver who appeared to be gesturing with his hands to manipulate a virtual reality field. According to Reuters, Trading volumes with futures of chocolate-making ingredient cocoa increased sharply in January when compared to the same month a year earlier as prices for the soft commodities surged amid a global supply tightness. Average daily volumes for cocoa futures, considering both the London and the New York-based contracts, increased 54% in January year-on-year, -year, according to monthly statistics released by the Intercontinental Exchange on Monday. According to Reuters, a U.S. appeals court on Monday refused to dismiss a lawsuit claiming that Bayer AG's Roundup weed killer caused cancer, the latest setback in the company's efforts to fend off thousands of similar lawsuits carrying potentially billions of dollars in damages. A three-judge panel of the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals rejected Bayer's argument that federal regulators' approval of Roundup shielded the company from being sued under state law for failing to warn consumers of the product's risks. Several other appeals courts had previously reached the same conclusion in similar lawsuits. According to Reuters, shares on Wall Street and in Europe fell on Monday and government bond yields jumped as traders amended their expectations of a near-term U.S. interest rate cut. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell continued to push back against the prospect of near-term rate cuts, in an interview aired on Sunday. According to Reuters, Citadel has hired Sam Finkelstein, previously at Goldman Sachs Asset Management, as a senior portfolio manager to lead a new development program for its fixed income and macro business, the hedge fund told Reuters on Monday. Finkelstein will manage risk and trade in the hedge fund's global fixed income and macro business in the newly created role, the hedge fund said. According to Reuters, Wall Street's main indexes fell on Monday pressured by rising Treasury yields after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell pushed back firmly against market speculations of imminent rate cuts, 
while investors assessed earnings from corporate America. In an interview aired on Sunday, Powell said more evidence on a sustainable downtrend in inflation was needed to warrant lower rates, while Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashgari wrote in an essay published on Monday that a resilient economy could defer rate cuts for some time. According to Reuters, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador announced that his government has reached an agreement with local billionaire Carlos Slim to buy the concession to part of a highway still under construction in the southern state of Oaxaca. I am very grateful to Carlos Slim because we have reached an agreement that the federal government is going to acquire the concession that was granted to him, and on very good terms, López Obrador said in a speech in Oaxaca on Sunday, without giving any details as to the cost. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve said U.S. banks reported tighter credit standards and weaker demand for commercial and industrial loans in the fourth quarter, though the share of those doing so shrank from the prior period. The proportion of U.S. banks tightening standards on commercial and industrial loans for medium and large businesses over the past three months dropped to 14.5 percent, from 33.9 percent in the third quarter, according to a Fed survey of lending officers released Monday. Some 53 percent of banks are keeping lending conditions basically unchanged. According to Reuters, U.S. banks anticipate an increase in demand for loans as interest rates fall this year even as they further tighten credit standards on some types of loans, according to a Federal Reserve survey of senior bank lending officers published on Monday. Banks cited deterioration in collateral values and a less favorable economic outlook as reasons they will likely tighten standards on commercial real estate, credit card and auto loans this year, the survey showed. They also expect loan quality to deteriorate across most types of loans, according to the survey. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields rose on Monday, with interest rate-sensitive two-year yields reaching a one-month high, after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell continued to push back against the prospect of near-term rate cuts. Powell said in an interview with 60 Minutes that the Fed can be prudent in deciding when to cut its benchmark interest rate, with a strong economy allowing central bankers time to build confidence that inflation will continue falling. According to Bloomberg, King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer, Buckingham Palace said, and the 75-year-old monarch will now receive treatment during which he will not be carrying out public duties. The palace did not specify the type of cancer found, except to rule out prostate cancer. The king was recently treated for a benign prostate enlargement, and it was during that treatment that the condition was found, it said. According to Reuters, a Canadian unit of global mining company Rio Tinto is facing a criminal case after an employee was seriously injured at an Arctic diamond mine, according to an announcement by local authorities. The accident took place on January 26, 2003 at the Dyavik mine, which is located about 200 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle in the Northwest Territories, the Local Workers' Safety and Compensation Commission said. According to Reuters, we work may be forced to take on a new bankruptcy loan to make up for slower than expected progress on rent negotiations, an attorney for the shared office space provider said Monday. WeWork's post-bankruptcy business plan is premised on a significant reduction in future rent costs from its landlords, and WeWork is at a crossroads in that effort, according to attorneys for WeWork and its landlords who spoke at a bankruptcy court hearing in Newark, New Jersey. According to Reuters, Palantir Technologies forecast a full-year profit above Wall Street estimates on Tuesday, as the data analytics company benefits from strong demand for its artificial intelligence offerings. Enterprises are looking to build and deploy their own eye-backed offerings, helping demand for Palantir's products including its artificial intelligence program, which CEO Alex Karp sees as the future of the company. According to Reuters, Brazil's Federal Audit Court said on Monday it has found irregularities in a contract between state-run oil company Petrobras and chemical company Unigel, according to a preliminary review scrutinizing a deal to boost domestic fertilizer output. Petrobras agreed recently to supply natural gas for Unigel to produce nitrogen fertilizers at two plants at least from Petrobras in the states of Bahia and Sergipe. According to Reuters, the landslide re-election of El Salvador President Nayib Bukele was cheered by supporters of his gang crackdown, but has worried opponents who fear the country is sliding into a de facto one-party state. The tallying of the vote was still ongoing on Monday but Bukele had appeared to deliver a crushing victory, with the backing of around 83% of voters. 
The president said his New Ideas Party was on course to bag 58 posts in the 60-seat Congress, although only 5% of the vote had been counted. According to Yahoo Finance, Spotify is set to report its fiscal fourth quarter earnings on Tuesday before the bell as the music streaming platform continues to focus on profitability amid changes to its podcasting strategy. In the third quarter, Spotify turned a profit for the first time in over a year as its recent price hikes coupled with lower-than-expected costs related to personnel and marketing spend boosted its bottom line. According to Yahoo Finance, General Motors continues to see a future in its troubled cruise robotaxi fleet, but in what form remains unclear. We're still very committed, and we still see that as a big growth opportunity for us, GM CFO Paul Jacobson said on Yahoo Finance Live. According to Reuters, television viewership of Sunday's Grammy Awards rose 34% from last year to an average of 16.9 million people, broadcaster CBS said on Monday. The audience was the highest for music's biggest awards show since a pre-pandemic ceremony in 2020, CBS said. According to Reuters, a deadly Pacific storm, the second Pineapple Express to sweep the West Coast in less than a week, stalled over Southern California on Monday unleashing torrential downpours that triggered street flooding and mudslides throughout the region. Extreme weather advisories for floods, high wind and winter storm conditions were posted on Monday across parts of California and southwestern Arizona where some 35 million people live. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. The trading and investment climate across Asia may be a little choppy on Tuesday with any enthusiasm fostered by China's latest steps to shore up its markets offset by another surge in U.S. bond yields and slide in U.S. rate cut expectations. According to Reuters, some of the largest U.S. banking and business groups on Monday sued three bank regulators over recently updated fair lending rules, escalating Wall Street's counterattack against what banks say are overreaching new regulations. The lawsuit, filed in the Northern District of Texas, seeks to vacate new rules enforcing the Community Reinvestment Act, arguing they exceed the regulator's statutory authority, are too complex, and could disincentive lending. According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan is laying the groundwork to end negative interest rates by April and overhaul other parts of its ultra-loose monetary framework, sources say, but is likely to go slow on any subsequent policy tightening amid lingering risks. The clearest hint of a change to date came from a summary of debate at the BOJ's January meeting released last week, where some policymakers called for an immediate policy shift including one who said now was a golden opportunity to phase out stimulus. According to Reuters, former President Donald Trump, who has refused to debate any of his rivals for the Republican nomination, on Monday said he wanted to debate U.S. President Joe Biden immediately. I'd like to debate him now because we should debate. We should debate for the good of the country, Trump said on a radio show hosted by conservative commentator Dan Bongino. According to Reuters, the Biden administration is sending five senior U.S. Treasury officials to Beijing this week for economic talks that will focus heavily on China's non-market policies that are adding excess industrial capacity, a Treasury official said on Monday. The delegation, led by Treasury Undersecretary for International Affairs Jay Shamba, plans to hold frank conversations as part of the U.S.-China Economic Working Group about Beijing subsidies that encourage overproduction of goods that threaten to flood global markets with cheap imports, the official said. According to Reuters, U.S.-listed exchange-traded funds managed by ARK Investment Management have wiped out a total of $14.3 billion in shareholder value over the 10 years ended December 31, 2023, according to a report by Morningstar Inc. That is more than double the estimated total losses incurred by each of the next four fund families on Morningstar's list. Morningstar calculated total losses by measuring the decline in assets in dollar terms, after excluding inflows or outflows. According to Reuters, chipmaker NXP Semiconductor's forecast first quarter profit above target and reported better than expected revenue for the last quarter on Monday, banking on a strong automotive market, a key consumer of its technology. Netherlands-based NXP supplies manufacturers with chips and other technologies needed for high-speed digital processing used in industries such as automotive, manufacturing, telecom and the Internet of Things. According to Reuters, 
Grocer Kroger said on Monday that Gary Millerchip was stepping down as chief financial officer and that Todd Foley would take over the role on an interim basis. Foley, who joined Kroger in 2001, was most recently group vice president, corporate controller and chief accounting officer of the company. According to Bloomberg, John Paulson must face a fraud claim by his former Puerto Rico business partner over a $17 million investment in a luxury car dealership, though a federal judge threw out other parts of the lawsuit against the hedge fund billionaire. U.S. District Judge Camille L. Velez Rive in San Juan, Puerto Rico, ruled Monday that Fahad Ghaffer could proceed with securities fraud and breach of contract claims against Paulson for allegedly failing to deliver a promised convertible note giving him a 50% stake in the dealership which was owned by a Paulson Family Trust. According to Bloomberg, mounting pressure from a top U.S. watchdog led to New York Community Bancorp's surprise decision to slash its dividend and stockpile cash in case commercial real estate loans go bad, according to people with direct knowledge of the matter. The drastic financial moves, which triggered a record plunge in the company's stock and dragged down shares across the industry last week, followed behind-the-scenes conversations with officials from the Office of the Controller of the Currency, the people said, asking not to be identified describing the confidential discussions. According to Reuters, RTX Corp. received subpoenas from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission over an investigation related to disclosures in 2023 regarding use of powder metal in engines manufactured by its subsidiary Pratt & Whitney. The defense contractor's regulatory filings showed on Monday that it was cooperating with the SEC on the investigation. According to Bloomberg, RTX Corp. is under investigation by U.S. securities regulators over the aerospace and defense giants' disclosures about a manufacturing flaw that led to a costly recall of engines powering Airbus Say's top-selling aircraft. The company received subpoenas related to the probe in November and January from the Securities and Exchange Commission. RTX said Monday in a regulatory filing. The agency sought engineering, financial and other documents in connection with the probe, RTX said. According to Bloomberg, Asian bonds were set to follow a slump in U.S. Treasuries as strong economic data cut the likelihood of a quick Federal Reserve pivot to monetary easing. Asia stocks were set for a mixed open. Australia's 10-year benchmark yield climbed six basis points early Tuesday after Treasuries came under renewed pressure on speculation that optimism regarding disinflation may have gone too far. Shares in Sydney and Tokyo were poised to open lower, while battered China-related stocks could enjoy a rare reprieve after a prolonged sell-off. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is trying to fend off a legal challenge from the multi-trillion dollar private fund industry to agency rules requiring hedge funds and private equity firms to detail quarterly fees and expenses to investors. The regulator is set to face off Monday against the Managed Funds Association and other trade groups in a hearing before a three-judge panel of the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans. According to Reuters, Space tourism company Virgin Galactic Holdings said on Monday that it had notified the Federal Aviation Administration of a detachment of an alignment pin from its VMS Eve carrier jet. The issue was found during post-flight reviews and reported to the regulator on Wednesday, Richard Branson's Space Venture said. According to Bloomberg, China's biotech stocks faced renewed selling pressure as geopolitical concerns add to a list of headwinds weighing on the sector. A gauge of Chinese biotech firms has underperformed the MSCI China index by the most since early 2020 amid a recently proposed U.S. legislation to ban some Chinese firms from government contracts. This comes after China's healthcare sector was beaten down over the past two years by factors such as the inclusion of some companies in U.S. unverified list and a government crackdown on corruption. According to Bloomberg, Senegal lawmakers agreed to delay presidential votes by 10 months to allow lawmakers probe into the process of selecting candidates that could run in the polls. The vote was postponed to December 15 from February 25, according to parliamentary proceedings on Monday. According to Reuters, the U.S. government on Monday announced that a labor rights mediation plan at a Goodyear Tire rubber company plant in Mexico has delivered $4.2 million in back pay to more than 1,300 current and former workers. 
The U.S. Department of Labor and U.S. Trade Representative's Office said the successful conclusion of their rapid response labor rights challenge under the U.S. Mexico Canada Agreement on Trade also resulted in immediate wage gains for most workers at the plant through reclassification of job categories in line with a sector wide labor agreement. According to Reuters, drugmaker Novartis AG said on Monday it will acquire Morphosis AG, a developer of cancer treatments, for 2.7 billion euros. Reuters first reported on Monday that Novartis was in advanced talks to acquire German biotech Morphosis, shares of which surged more than 40% on the news. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden's administration said on Monday he would veto a standalone bill backed by House of Representatives Republicans that would provide aid to Israel, as it backs a broader bill providing assistance to Ukraine and Israel and providing new funds for border security. The administration strongly encourages both chambers of the Congress to reject this political ploy and instead quickly send the Bipartisan Emergency National Security Supplemental Appropriations Act to the president's desk, the Office of Management and Budget said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, an uptick of missed payments on private debt by Chinese local government financing vehicles is spilling over into their bonds, potentially leading to a downward spiral. As the LGFVs fail to pay on debt such as loans or commercial papers, bondholders can invoke a so-called cross-protection clause, allowing them to demand extra collateral or ask for faster or higher payments. According to Reuters, Britain on Tuesday said it would spend more than £100 million to launch nine new research hubs in artificial intelligence and train regulators about the technology. I is moving fast, but we have shown that humans can move just as fast, Technology Minister Michelle Donilan said in a statement. By taking an agile, sector-specific approach, we have begun to grip the risks immediately. According to Bloomberg, potential investors in Elon Musk's new artificial intelligence startup, XAI, are focusing on two key selling points, access to the billionaire's constellation of companies, referred to as the Musconomy, and the early success of one of its biggest competitors, OpenAI. Musk's track record and OpenAI feature prominently in a slide deck circulating among potential XAI investors in December and January, according to copies reviewed by Bloomberg. The presentation includes a slide showcasing the key attributes that drove OpenAI's success, such as strategic partnerships and access to capital, and a side-by-side -side comparison showing Zay's similarities. According to Reuters, Inflation in the U.S. presidential election will be the biggest drivers of global markets this year, while liquidity challenges are a growing focus, according to traders surveyed by J.P. Morgan. Some 27% of traders see inflation as having the biggest impact, followed by 20% for the November election, the survey published on Tuesday showed. According to Reuters, the U.K. government should take urgent action to encourage people to switch to electric vehicles, from targeted subsidies to speeding up new charging infrastructure, said a report from Britain's Upper House of Parliament released on Tuesday. The House of Lords report, entitled, EV Strategy, Rapid Recharge Needed, which follows an inquiry into Britain's electric vehicle transition strategy, also calls on the government to clearly communicate to the general public why they should buy EVs. According to Reuters, a U.S. Labor Board official on Monday said men's basketball players at Dartmouth College, an Ivy League school in New Hampshire, are the school's employees and can vote on whether to join a union. The ruling by Laura Sachs, a regional director with the National Labor Relations Board in Boston, sets the stage for what could be the first successful unionization bid in college athletics and comes amid a broader effort to roll back restrictions on compensation for student-athletes. According to Reuters, Mexico President Andres Manuel López Obrador presented constitutional reforms in a speech on Monday, which is celebrated as Constitution Day nationwide. The reforms that I propose seek to establish constitutional rights and strengthen ideals and principles related to humanism, justice, honesty, austerity and democracy, he said in a speech in the capital, Mexico City. According to Reuters, U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo on Monday said her department plans to make several funding awards within two months from the government's $39 billion program to boost semiconductor manufacturing. According to Bloomberg, a momentous shift is underway in global markets as investors pull billions of dollars from China's sputtering economy, two decades after betting on the country as the world's biggest growth story. 
Much of that cash is now heading for India, with Wall Street giants like Goldman Sachs Group Inc. and Morgan Stanley endorsing the South Asian nation as the prime investment destination for the next decade. According to Bloomberg, reliable sources of liquidity are at the top of traders' minds as they brace for another year of turbulence, according to a J.P. Morgan Chase & Company electronic trading survey. Volatile markets are predicted to be the greatest daily challenge for a second year in a row, the annual poll of institutional traders found. Access to liquidity is the biggest concern about market structure, ahead of regulatory change and data costs. According to Bloomberg, Palantir Technologies Inc. said that demand for its artificial intelligence products was driving sales at the company, and gave a higher-than-expected profit outlook for 2024. The company's shares jumped more than 10% in after-hours trading. The Denver-based software and analysis company said it expects adjusted income from operations of $834 million to $850 million for this year. Analysts had expected $760.3 million, according to estimates compiled by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, the U.S. Justice Department has sent out new information requests in its antitrust probe of concert promoter Live Nation Entertainment's Ticketmaster arm amid concerns the unit isn't cooperating, Bloomberg News reported on Monday. U.S. Senators have previously slammed Live Nation's lack of transparency and inability to block bot purchases of tickets following a major fiasco involving ticket sales for Taylor Swift's long-awaited concert tour in late 2022. According to Reuters, payments company Cielo said on Monday a trio of Brazilian firms including its controlling shareholders had launched a tender offer to take it private in a deal that could be worth up to 5.90 billion reais. Lenders Bradesco and Banco do Brasil, which together hold almost 60% of Cielo, are making the offer together with their shared holding company, Grupo Elopar. According to Bloomberg, Japanese wage growth strengthened less than expected in December while still showing signs of sufficient underlying momentum to keep the Bank of Japan on track to end its negative rate regime in the coming months. Nominal cash earnings rose 1.0% in December from the previous year, in part with the help of a 0.5% gain in winter bonuses, the Labor Ministry reported Tuesday. It was an acceleration versus a month earlier but trailed analysts' expectations of a 1.4% gain. Growth was modest compared with a year earlier, when special allowances pushed up nominal wages by the biggest margin in 26 years. According to Reuters, World Bank President Ajay Banga on Monday rejected allegations that the bank's International Finance Corp arm sought to cover up reports of sexual abuse at a for-profit school chain in Kenya in which it held a stake from 2013 to 2022. Banga Asked during a Center for Global Development public event about the IFC's response to an independent investigation into the allegations at Bridge International Academies, said he disagreed with the characterization of a cover-up by the IFC. According to Reuters, Montenegro on Monday extradited Han Chong Jun, a financial executive of the Terraform Labs cryptocurrency firm, to South Korea, the Balkan country's justice ministry said. According to Reuters, oil prices were little moved in early trading on Tuesday, as market participants assessed a visit to the Middle East by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to discuss a ceasefire offer in the region. Blinken met Saudi Arabia's de facto ruler on Monday. Palestinians hope the visit will clinch a truce before a threatened Israeli assault on Rafah, a border city where about half the Gaza Strip population is sheltering. According to Bloomberg, Diamond Offshore Drilling Inc. said equipment on a rig under lease to BPPLC accidentally broke free during a storm and sank to the bottom off the UK coast. No one was injured and no crude leaked into the ocean. The February 1st equipment incident, involved the Ocean Great White Rig about 125 miles west of the Shetland Islands, the company said in a US filing on Monday. BP is leasing the vessel through at least August. Diamond Offshore describes it on its website as one of the world's largest ultra-deepwater harsh environment semi-submersible rigs. According to Bloomberg, oil held a modest advance as the market weighed geopolitical risks in the Middle East against hawkish comments from the Federal Reserve. West Texas Intermediate traded below $73 a barrel after rising 0.7% on Monday in a session that also saw it rebound from a three-week low, with Brent closing near $78. 
The U.S. vowed more strikes against Iranian forces and regional proxies, and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said absolute victory over Hamas was essential for his country's security. According to Reuters, the U.S. dollar was perched near a three-month peak on Tuesday, buoyed by elevated Treasury yields, on growing expectations that the Federal Reserve is unlikely to cut interest rates aggressively this year. The dollar index, which measures the U.S. currency against six rivals, was at 104.42, having touched 104.60 on Monday, its highest since November 14. The index is up 3% for the year so far after dropping 2% in 2023. According to Bloomberg, investors looking for an end to the freefall in shares of Chinese e-commerce company Alibaba Group Holding Limited may be in for a long wait, if options traders are correct. The stock's nearly 80% tumble from a 2020 record high has driven its valuation to an all-time low and put its market capitalization on a par with upstart rival PDD Holdings Inc. The derivatives market indicates further pain, with the options skew showing increased bearishness ahead of Alibaba's earnings report due Wednesday. A put contract betting the stock will drop 14% by the end of April was the most traded on Monday in Hong Kong. According to Reuters, Australia looks set to pass a reshaped tax cuts bill that would give low-income earners more breaks and trim benefits to the wealthy, as the opposition pledged support on Tuesday after initially criticizing the government's shift in policy. The conservative opposition's decision came as the parliament resumed after a two-month recess. According to Bloomberg, Blackstone Inc. is considering a bid for skincare company L'Occitane International Saw, according to people familiar with the matter. The private equity firm has been conducting preliminary due diligence as it evaluates a potential offer for L'Occitane, the people said. Blackstone is considering the possibility of teaming up with L'Occitane's billionaire chairman Reinhold Geiger on a buyout, according to the people, who asked not to be identified discussing private deliberations. According to Reuters, Japan's industry ministry said on Tuesday it would extend subsidies worth as much as 242.9 billion yen for Bain Capital-backed Kioxia and Western Digital to expand memory chip production in Mie and Iwate prefectures. The funding provides underpinning for the two companies, which have been hammered by a slump in the market for NAND flash chips and whose merger talks stalled late last year following opposition from Kioxia investor S.K. Hinnix. According to Reuters, Asian shares edged up on Tuesday thanks to a bounce in battered Chinese markets, although investors were cautious after a slide on Wall Street amid diminishing expectations of a near-term Federal Reserve rate cut, which in turn underpinned the dollar. Oil prices held largely steady as traders took stock of a visit to the Middle East by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to discuss a ceasefire offer in the region. According to Bloomberg, Abu Dhabi Investment Authority is considering buying a minority stake in Dalian Wanda Group Co's mall operator, people familiar with the matter said, as the unit revamps its shareholding structure. Adia, as the Abu Dhabi Wealth Fund is known, has held initial discussions over the potential stake purchase in Juhai Wanda Commercial Management Group Company, the people said. Adia may buy shares from existing holders, said the people, who asked not to be identified as the information is private. According to Bloomberg, Blackstone Inc. has agreed to back a new Asia-focused hedge fund headed by a former executive at Millennium Management, in one of the region's biggest launches this year, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Jonathan Shong's Aeropoint Investment Partners is also in talks with other institutional investors as potential early backers, said the people, who asked not to be identified discussing private information. It's expected to start with about $1 billion, the people added. According to Bloomberg, snow and icy rain in central China stranded people on highways and in train stations as the nation gears up for the world's biggest travel week. At least two people died in Hubei and Hunan provinces because heavy snowfall collapsed market rooftops, according to local media reports. In Hubei, some drivers were trapped on roads for as long as three days because of icy conditions, while trains were delayed up to 24 hours, according to China Business News. According to Bloomberg, Central Hujin Investment Limited said it will continue to increase holdings of exchange-traded funds, adding to signs that China's authorities are stepping up efforts to revive the struggling stock market. Stocks rallied, offering a reprieve to investors who have had to grapple with wild market swings over the past two sessions. 
The onshore benchmark CSI 300 index climbed more than 2%. Small cap stocks, which have led the recent sell-off, also rebounded, with the CSI 1000 index up 2%. According to Reuters, California can proceed with enforcing a law requiring people to undergo background checks to buy ammunition, after a divided federal appeals court on Monday put on hold a judge's ruling declaring it unconstitutional. A Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals panel on a two-to-one vote stayed last week's ruling by U.S. District Judge Roger Benitez in San Diego holding that the background checks law violated the right to bear arms protected by the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment. According to Reuters, hundreds of Haitians took to the streets on Monday to protest the unelected government of Prime Minister Ariel Henry whose administration has seen alliances of violent gangs expand control across most of the capital and spread to nearby areas. National police used tear gas to disperse protesters, who set fire to car tires, filling streets with clouds of grey smoke. According to Reuters, Australia's central bank on Tuesday trimmed its forecasts for inflation and economic growth but signaled demand was still running ahead of supply, suggesting it would be in no rush to cut interest rates. In its quarterly statement on monetary policy, the Reserve Bank of Australia said inflation was now expected to be back in the central bank's 2-3% target range in late 2025 and reach the midpoint of 2.5% in 2026. According to Bloomberg, Thailand's sugar output is set to be even lower than expected this season after dry weather impacted plant growth, which will squeeze global supply and could extend a rally in benchmark futures. Industry group Thai Sugar Millers Corp has trimmed the top end of its forecast production range by 500,000 tons to 7.5 million tons for 2023-24, according to director Rangsit Hingrat. Should output meet that estimate, it would be a third lower than what was produced in the previous season. According to Bloomberg, a top Chinese macro hedge fund said it slashed stock positions last month as the nation's market route deepened, taking losses after acknowledging mistakes betting on a rapid economic recovery. Shanghai Banxia Investment Management Center significantly reduced its equity assets in the middle of January to cut losses, only keeping exposure to safer high dividend stocks and bigger companies in the CSI 300 index, according to its January letter to investors. According to Reuters, shares of Maya Holdings surged to an 11 month high on Tuesday, after the retailer defied market expectations around their first half sales as it navigates the effect of a cost of living crisis. The Australian department store forecast interim sales of 1.83 billion Australian dollars, which analysts said were better than feared, sending its shares up around 17.3% to 78 Australian cents. According to Reuters, Australia's central bank held interest rates steady on Tuesday as expected, but cautioned that a further increase could not be ruled out given inflation was still too high and it needed to see more evidence that price pressures were cooling. Wrapping up its February policy meeting, the Reserve Bank of Australia kept rates at a 12-year high of 4.35%, having last lifted them by a quarter point in November. According to Reuters, Digital Currency Group objected late Monday to the bankruptcy plan of its subsidiary Genesis Global Capital, saying that the crypto lender is proposing to pay its customers more than they are legally entitled to. DCG argued that Genesis should pay its customers and creditors no more than the value the crypto assets had in January 2023, when Genesis filed for bankruptcy. According to Bloomberg, Australia's central bank kept interest rates unchanged at its first meeting of a revamped policy schedule and signaled a higher bar for additional tightening as inflation slows further. The Reserve Bank maintained its cash rate at a 12-year high of 4.35%, as predicted by economists, on Tuesday. RBA Governor Michelle Bullock will be questioned on the topic by journalists at her inaugural post-meeting press conference at 3.30 p.m. in Sydney. According to Bloomberg, President Xi Jinping is set to receive a briefing from Chinese regulators on financial markets, according to people with knowledge of the matter, underscoring an urgency in Beijing to prop up the country's plunging stocks. Regulators led by the China Securities Regulatory Commission plan to update the top leadership on market conditions and the latest policy initiatives as soon as Tuesday, said the people, asking not to be identified as the matter as private. The timing is subject to change, the people said. It's unclear whether any new support measures will come out of the meeting.
According to Bloomberg, Qatar is pushing to sell more liquefied natural gas to India, where imports of the super-chilled fuel are expected to double by the end of the decade. The Persian Gulf producer will hold high-level talks with Gale India Limited and Indian Oil Corp. during India Energy Week in Goa, according to traders with knowledge of the discussions. It's also likely to extend a long-term supply contract with Petronet LNG Limited, which will expire in 2028, said the traders, who asked not to be named as the negotiations are private. According to Reuters, Russia's air defense systems destroyed seven Ukraine-launched drones over the southwestern region of Belgorod, the Russian defense ministry said on Tuesday after the region's governor said that the city of Gubkin was under a drone attack. No drone reached its target, the ministry said on the Telegram messaging app.